All right, guys. So today we'll be discussing on what a spread trade is or a bear trade is. Uh, it's very crucial you know about this because it's been used heavily by um, professional traders and hedge funds and big ma asset management companies, and they make quite a lot of money out of it. But somehow or the other, the retail traders don't seem to trade it. So it's very good that you understand it. So how I'm going to teach is I'm going to show some few examples, and then I'm going to show you. Uh, how easy it is to make money doing spread trading and also we'll discuss the risk profile and how you can reduce your systematic risk on how some of the big crashes that you see in the global market doesn't affect people who spread trade. Uh, I'll also discuss some of the common strategies that's used, uh, whether it be discretionary trading or algo-based systematic trading. Uh, I'll also explain how to execute this for retail traders because I know majority of the people out there are retail traders and now because of the futures products and the micro futures products and the CFDs and stocks uh, or even cryptocurrencies how you can actually make the spread trade practically in all these markets and reduce your risk substantially and also make substantial returns as well. So let's start with the definition. So pair trading is basically a relationship between two financial products. So a simple example will be Coca-Cola and Pepsi or Boeing and Airbus is another. Another one could be JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs. So what we do is we go long one of these stocks and then we short the other stock. So this can be applied to even uh, futures products like S&P 500. So you can go long June and then short September. Uh, or, uh, you know, that's when it's called spread trading when you actually do it in futures. But the mechanics is pretty much the same. So one of the most important things you should note in a pair trading is that it should be related to each other. So if it's not related, then it's not ideal. So for example, Boeing and Airbus are kind of related stock, but Coca-Cola and Boeing is not. Basically, uh, trading the relationship between both of these, and that's what gives you the edge in this pair trading now see how to plot a uh, pair trading graph in trading view so it's pretty simple so let's take an example of going long coca-cola and going short pepsi so it's pretty simple it's just coca-cola simple minus the one that's you're shorting so when you're shorting you're taking a negative position right so it's minus pepsi so that's pretty much it it's very simple very simple graph here uh, beautifully done. Now you see these uh, changes here, right? So if I can look, zoom in, um, you can see the point difference 96 to 108. Now if I do two times Coca-Cola, I can I can create a bias to it. So I'm going long multiple times of Coca-Cola. So now you can see the point difference to be much smaller. So in that way, I can manage the risk and the reward. So that's another advantage of pairs trading. So you can actually uh, change your position size. Uh, because if you look Coca-Cola individually, it's trading at 60 something. And if you look at Pepsi, it's trading at 172. So if I'm long Coca-Cola and I want to really, really squeeze out as much as profit in my uh, pair straight for the coca-cola position then uh, going two times coca-cola can be a good decision so these are some of these small minor changes you can do you can try to play around with those numbers in your graph but that's pretty much it now let's let's take another example let's do uh, long sp i mean long uh, nasdaq 100 and short s p 500 index etf so that'll be qqq minus spy so there you go uh, again, a pretty simple graph. Again, you can make changes to it. You can add two times SPY. You can do two asterisk SPY. So now the change will be higher, you know. So these are some of the things you can do uh, to mess around with. But I like to keep it simple most of the time. Uh, but if there's like a massive change, massive difference, like we saw in Coca-Cola and Pepsi, you can always play around with it and make some changes. So now let's discuss about how we can make money in the pair trade and how the profit model is. So let's take the example of going long Coca-Cola and short Pepsi. So there are multiple profit case scenarios. So let's get the first profit case scenario. And that's in case the Coca-Cola stock goes crazy up, but then the Pepsi stock goes up, but not that crazy. So you'll be making money then there. And then profit case number two is that both of them crashes, but then the Pepsi stock crashes like crazy down and still you'll be making profit there as well. 
Now, profit case number three is that Coca-Cola goes crazy up, but Pepsi kind of stays unchanged. But because you're long Coca-Cola, you're still making money on that. And Sharp Pepsi has not realized any other, pro any other losses because it's a constant. Now, profit case number four is like Coca-Cola stays a constant, but Pepsi crashes. And because you're Sharp Pepsi, that position makes money and the long Coca-Cola stays a constant. So you can see there are four case scenarios where you can make money as compared to just going outright in Coca-Cola or outright in Pepsi. This is the biggest advantage of pairs trading because it gives you more opportunities to be right and thus making it much easier for you to make money far a uh, better product, not better product in the form of taste, but as compared to market share, it's got a bigger market share as compared to Pepsi. So they're a much healthier company, even though they have been declining the past few years. So nine times out of 10, when you have essentially um, a stock market crash or something, Coca-Cola is a far much better bet than Pepsi. So let's compare the Coca-Cola and Pepsi uh, pair trade during these crashes we had in 2020 and 2008. So I'm going to close that, just get that in there, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, enter. So we've got the pair graph there. So I'm going to change this to weekly so we can zoom out rather better. Okay, I think daily will be far superior. Um, okay, so 2020 crash, if you can see, happened on uh, February, March last year. Um, so there you go. So March, uh, you can see that the Coca-Cola, long Coca-Cola, short Pepsi actually went up. So that trade of long Coca-Cola, short Pepsi would have given you a pretty decent profit in 2020 uh, pandemic crash. Now, how about in 2008 financial crisis? So let's see that one as well. Again, we are based on the assessment that, hey, Coca-Cola is a much healthier company. And when the entire stocks goes down, Coca-Cola is a far much better bet than Pepsi. Um, so 2008, there you go. You see that big spike there? That is basically the 2008 financial crisis. So 2008 financial crisis, you can see the substantial amount of returns you could have made, um, almost 50% increase. So that's from 50 to almost 25 uh, on a pair trade of long Coca-Cola and short Pepsi. So let's now discuss the different trading styles. Like obviously there's discretionary and systematic trading styles. I know our YouTube channel is based on systematic trading because uh, we are quantitative traders, but I'll just discuss the discretionary style as well so you can really uh, make money out of it. So uh, basically for the discretionary trading in pair trading, it's based on news. So let's say Coca-Cola has got a bad earnings or bad news or something, then going short Coca-Cola and going long Pepsi is a good strategy. Um, the other thing you might want to look is also the weightage. So for example, S&P 500 and NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is purely tech-based, while S&P 500 has industries and manufacturing. It also has got tech stocks as well, but because NASDAQ has got a huge amount of tech stocks, anything bad in the tech stock industry like Apple or Tesla or Twitter or anything, that can really put down the NQ. So you can actually short NASDAQ and then go long S&P 500 and make a pretty decent amount of money. So the other things to note is that now I'm going to discuss three scenarios uh, no. on our chart. So one will be the 2020 pandemic crash, the 2008 financial crisis and the dot-com bubble. Now let's compare NASDAQ and uh, S&P 500, so QQQ minus SPY. I think this one may be a weekly, might be a, we'll continue with a daily. Uh, so here again, a beautiful 2020. Uh, this trade, I've specifically made this trade personally from my end. Uh, so when the news came out about this whole Corona crash and when I knew the supply chain would be affected across the world, uh, I knew the tech stock would be the least affected. So one of the trades that I did, which I really, really liked, uh, is basically go long QQQ and short SPY because I knew that Twitter or Facebook or these kind of things uh, will not be affected a lot. But then the industrial and the manufacturing sector, which is S&P 500, because it's got 500 stocks in it, uh, will be affected a lot. So I went long QQQ and short SPY and you can have made a substantial amount of returns. Uh, during 2020, the pandemic crash. So let's see 2008 as well. So 2008 is a global financial crisis. So it affected basically all the businesses. So did it affect the tech stocks? Of course it affected the tech stocks, you know, but it affected tech stocks less than it affected the rest of the market, like the banking sector or the industrial and manufacturing sector. So 
let's see 2008 again the long qqq short spy gave you a substantial big profit that pair share would have been an amazing trade uh, during the 2008 financial crisis now let's take the case of 2001 so if you can remember 2001 that's dot-com bubble crash so that was purely for tech stocks and at that time nasdaq 100 had uh, a lot of dot-com sites and at that time going long qqq and short sby is not the trade that you should be taking you should be taking the exact opposite trade so i will be doing is short qqq and long spy both of them are getting affected for sure both spy and qqq is going to crash but then the qqq crash will be bigger than the spy crash and that's one of our profit scenarios we discussed before in the slide so 2001 the qqq minus spy you can see the market went down from all the way up all the way crashed down so uh this is the qqq minus spy so if i did spy minus qqq which is basically long spy and short qqq i would have made a pretty decent profit so i hope you understood the gist of the discretionary trading bit in the pairs trade so you can apply this on a daily basis like for example today you hear information that elon musk said a comment uh, on twitter or something because twitter is a tech stocks you know you, then the beautiful trade would be short nasdaq and long spy or if you hear news such as uh, uh banking sector is affected then going short spy and long qqq uh, is a trade that you could do so you can do it from a daily basis or you can also do it from uh, you know from a long-term basis or during stock market crashes even though you're late and that's the beauty about pairs trade even though if you're late to the party you can still make the trade happen unfortunately in 2001 i was probably 10 years old 11 years old so um it doesn't matter does it i couldn't make that trade so regardless uh, that's one of the examples of discretionary trading so now let's take a look at systematic trading approach so from a systematic standpoint you can come up with different strategies uh, if you're trading s p 500 june september those kind of spread kind of a trade instead of a pair trading then mean reverting strategies will be far more ideal but however if you're doing things like qqq and spy generally you tend to see steep trends during crashes and then reverting back to the mean uh, for a substantial period of time so the trend normally stays for a long time until and unless there is a massive change so for instance in 2001 after the crash there was this fundamental trend against the tech stocks and that kept on going down uh, similarly in 2008 uh, it was the other way around you know like there was a general trend against the industrial or manufacturing or banking stock and then the tech stocks went to go up and then you had the uh, you know the normal choppiness kind of uh, area so uh, many strategies can work in this from a mean reverting strategies to a trend following strategies we've discussed many of the strategies in our youtube channel but also we discuss many uh, in the courses especially the mean reverting strategies but uh, just for you guys to get a start off with um, in our youtube channel there's one uh, with rsi so we actually call it an rsi divergence uh, so i'll just leave that link in the description but i'll open that up anyways um, here so the RSI divergence works very well. So any anything based on volatility uh, on these spread trades tend to work very well because you, you tend to see some extreme moves all the time. So uh, I'm just going to zoom in somewhere to see these divergences. So for example, here there's a buy signal there which led to uh, the move upside. And again, a buy signal here um, which led to a small correction uh, which you could have made some money. But then again, the market went down which called for another buy signal and then again it went up here again another buy signal here it went up there again as well so um, multiple strategies here uh, I have encoded the sell signal but then I've left it to you guys to code it the code for the um, this one is available free in our YouTube channel I'll leave the description again like I said before uh, on our um, on the description again uh, so again here there was this buy signal here the market went up and again here uh, the market went up but again as uh, pair trading is just like any other product treat it like any other product just like you'll treat stocks but understand the fundamentals of it you know once you understand the fundamentals of it even if you're late to the party you can make lots of money just like i said the discretionary trading uh, side of things even the 2020 uh pandemic crash even if you're late to the party you could have substantially made a lot of returns same thing applies for 2008 and also the 2000 dot com bubble so the whole idea of having a base trading approach or a strategy in your portfolio is to reduce systematic risk so when you have stock market crashes like the 2020 or the 2008 uh, as discussed before um 
the portfolio of the stocks that you have, all of them might have gone down, but this specific trade on the pairs trade would have actually made a lot of money. And so that would have reduced your drawdowns considerably. Um, so how can we execute this trade for the majority of the retail traders out there? So one of the ways is through CFDs. Uh, so there are lots of CFD brokers out there who provide stocks and also index ETFs. Now, the reason why I want you to think about CFDs, even though I don't recommend it, is because of the short selling margin position, because most of the retail traders don't have a big account size. Uh, so short selling requires a huge margin requirement, and this kind of avoids this problem. Uh, so CFDs, you can actually short the NASDAQ and go long S&P or short Pepsi and long Coca-Cola. Those products are generally available in the CFDs market. The other way is through futures. Uh, futures also since it's a leverage instrument. Uh, you can actually uh, take lots of trades on the futures market, whether it be stock futures or index futures. So these days CME has come up with micro contracts, whether it be in gold or crude oil or S&P 500 or NASDAQ. So you can actually take long position and short position uh, on these futures and make money as well. So uh, finally, we've got an opportunity for retail traders to pull off this, which is something that uh, uh, professional traders and prop firms and hedge funds used to do this whole pairs trading approach. But now you can also pull this out. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Hope you have a great day.